Hi, I'm Heinberg. Good to have you back. Since I started building the six baby hair wall of test equipment behind me, I've gotten a bunch of questions from you. So in this video, I'm going to address them. This exploration owes a lot to Dennis Wershaw of the Waveform Research Center in Rotterdam. Dennis put up a very concise guide on what kind of gear to get, so I linked that in the description below. The first question I always get is why? Why would I make music with instruments that are not designed for that? And the easiest answer for me is to say the sound. These things were built to the highest measuring standard, so they sound amazing when used musically. All the materials that are in there, such as coils, vacuum tubes, are carefully selected and fine-tuned. And the range that these instruments offer, both in the frequency that they put out and the volume, is unheard of in musical equipment. The second answer for me is that I was always fascinated by early electronic music, such as Stockhausen and Pierre Schäfer did especially Stockhausen, who used test equipment, broadcast filters and so on to create his famous work Kontakte. So this for me is like musical archaeology, stepping on the path that the giants that came before us walked on. And the third answer is, I love the interfaces. These knobs, they are huge and you can fine control everything so beautifully. So you can do much, much more with less, because tiny adjustments mean a lot. The bigger interfaces allow for a level of precision that enables you to think more minimally. And making more with less has always been a goal of me, compositionally. Is it dangerous to use test equipment for music? Absolutely. Especially if you've got old test equipment that you don't know if it's been maintained, if it's still working. I've had a few things go up in smoke, so I'm always very careful when I make music with this and I don't leave this stuff on when I leave the room. Vacuum tube equipment puts out very high voltages, so you should not try to fix anything if you don't exactly know what you're doing. This can be life endangering. And of course, this stuff is also dangerous to your gear, because some of these can put up up to 110 volts out of their outputs, which will fry any professional audio equipment you put behind it. I managed to brick this Mogafoga Basemur, for example, when I ran hot voltages into it. The high volume just broke apart the filter bank and it started to sing completely and I felt like I had unlocked a secret and I could unlock that secret maybe 10 times and then it said goodbye and the microcontroller on here decided to stop working. So watching your levels is extremely important unless you're technically versed and can mod these. But I am not a technical person, I just love making music with technical equipment. To take care of the levels before I go into my mixer over here, I use two tools. The first one is these cheap Omnitronic passive mixers. There are just simple passive mixers, cost about 30 bucks on eBay and because they are passive they take away a bit of the signal which works well. Some of the hottest stuff like the waveform generators here they don't care. They will punch through even if this level is very low, but at least this will protect your other gear. To go completely quiet, I employ oscilloscope switches that can handle a lot of voltage. For that purpose, I use the Heathkit 101, and I've got two of those, and the Harmec 64 chopper which enables you to have four channels here that you can invert and offset and do all kinds of beautiful things with. If you have a mixer with pads, so minus 20 or minus 30 decibel, engage those and watch your gain structure. It's different to what you're used to. What are these strange connectors on test equipment? 
There's usually two kinds. The first one is banana, such as here, especially on the older ones. Lots of it is banana. And the second one is BNC. Both are still pretty common and you can get cables very cheap. So say, for example, like a long banana cable like this costs like three euro or something. And a BNC cable, I don't know, 150 or something. I prefer to use banana over BNC because banana cables are stackable, meaning you can take one signal and distribute it to many different places. For that, I use BNC to banana adapters, which are really handy. You just press and turn, and then they're in. And then you press and turn it the other way, and they're out again. A very sturdy way to make a connection. And to go from banana to your mixer or your Eurorack, you can use one of these low gain boxes. These are made by Logan Electronics, and it's just a banana to mini jack or banana to guitar jack adapter. These are a bit pricey, but if you don't want to solder them yourself, well, this is the easiest way to get an adapter going. If you want to stay with BNC, you can just use these BNC to RCA adapters, which also plug right in, and then take an RCA cable. And then put an adapter here to a regular jack or whatever, maybe your mixer also has RCA. So this works also fine and is a cheap option. With banana, you often need two cables, one for the signal, the red one, and one for the ground, the black one. But if everything is connected to the same mixer, thus has a common ground, you'll be fine just using mostly the red outputs. It does tend to get a little messy because the spaghetti are enormous then and it's much worse than, for example, on a Eurorex system, I think. But also again, hey, it's big, so you've got more way to move around this. And as a side note, that is something that I really love. Working this thing feels like a workout because I've got stuff up here, I've got stuff down there, so I do get my own <laughs> aerobics workout when I play this. Is it possible to sequence test equipment? Yes, because many of these have a uh, VCG or VCF or whatever it's named at that company in, which allows you to sweep the signal, basically set a range where you can adjust the pitch. And you can use a sequencer to do that. So you can play pitched melodies. I love using the Surge touch keyboard for that because it's all banana and it's an amazing instrument. And I feel I'm still underutilizing its potential, but this works great. You can of course use any other CV sequencer. A uh, Korg SQ1 would also work really fine. Sweep ins are pretty common, but something to change the amplitude of a signal like VCA is pretty rare and only the better equipped test equipment has that. Usually that is called amplitude modulation. And these oscillators often feature a secondary oscillator that can modulate that. If you're looking for function generators, this is something to look out for. Many function generators also have manual triggers, so you can play them manually. Or use the coma field kit and a motor like a solenoid and flick that switch manually if you don't want to mod the whole thing. Where do I acquire test equipment? The answer is pretty boring. Much of this is actually eBay and eBay classifieds. I buy a lot of stuff as untested slash not working, but seven out of 10 times it's usually fine because much of this was built to last. Unless you're counting the Nimbin stuff. These things have been used to hell and back and they are pretty beat up. And many of the modules that I got don't work probably anymore, which is a shame. But the NIM bin format, well, that's a bit of a headache. But it's also lovely. 
Buying used untested is the way to go if your frustration level is not too high. You could also ping all the laboratories and universities in the area. If you're a student, your university probably has a lot of stuff stashed away that they don't use anymore but haven't thrown out yet. So try to find the department that could have something and ask around. Maybe you could pick something up cheaply or for free. In fact, I know a guy from my subreddit that picked up 10 function generators. 10! And they're nice ones, so he can make a mega drone. What kind of test equipment will music? Well, of course, the function generators. They are basically generating sines, square waves and saws like your regular oscillator. They usually have a much extended range, which makes them nice for FM, especially if you get a few of them. And because their sines are so pure, you can get some very beautiful tones out of that. With function generators, I think the more you have is better, because then you can create more complex chords, sounds, and scapes, and modulations across all over them. I can recommend WaveTag, which are very playable, sound very good, and are also lightweight. Then there's Hewlett Packet, who have been building function generators since the ages, and you can find a lot of variety in what they have, from big tube units to small and dense tiny function generators. Krohn and Hyde also does beautiful function generators, but the knobs on these might be a point that will need repair if you get one of these. On Dennis' recommendation about the model 2400, which is like a Buchler 258 complex oscillator in what it can do, but not working, so I'll have to get that fixed. Then there are more obscure companies like Feedback, who made this giant variable phase function generator which is awesome in what it can do because it's quadrature and i don't know much about their other function generators but they might be worth looking out for in germany you have rode and schwarz which made a beautiful sign generator that i use a lot and of course the almighty brill and care but it's hard and expensive to get brill and care now all of these companies also made pulse generators. And pulse generators are often integrated into function generators or their separate units. You can use pulse generators as oscillators. And since most of them have control over pulse width, Nick Bad would also be happy because you can modulate the pulse width. Pulse generators are perfect for clocking everything and creating rhythms. Because there's a thing called pulse mask mixing. Especially if you use a scope mixer such as this. This means you take three oscillators, put them in three ins here, and then apply a rhythm via a pulse. Because if the pulse is negative, it will pull down all the signals and you can create rhythmic variations. So you can actually play rhythmic chords which is a very nice thing because, as I said, doing rhythmic stuff in test equipment is not that easy. Unless you have word generators. I made a big video on the Booga from HP, the 8006A word generator, which you can basically use as a trigger sequencer. Word generators are newer technology and you could say that Something like the Programmierbare Impulsgenerator over here is also a word generator because you can program a series of pulses that don't all have to be regular. So word generators or programmable pulse generators are perfect for creating rhythms. So look out for those. And you might find something rare that nobody's ever heard of like I did with this one. Of course, no synthesizer would be complete without a noise source. So finding a nice white noise source is something you should also do. The next group of test equipment to look out for are filters. Filters in test equipment are usually very different from synthesizer filters because they are meant to be clean and precise, so they don't have high resonance. Unless we're talking about the UBM, which has a feedback knob. So you can resonate that thing far away. Most of these are bandpass filters, so you can really tune into the signal that you are looking for. Even though they are technical, I like Cronen height filters, because they 
ping also very nicely. So you can use them for hi-hats or bass drums. All very dry, but sometimes I like this micro sound style of percussion. Rockland slash Wavetech also made filters in that style. One of the beauties in my collection is the Variable Filter Model 315A. This one was expensive. It cost me 350 euros, but it was worth it because this is a vacuum tube filter that adds something nice to every signal. These are well known in the dub music community, so they command the price. Similar to the Brilliant Care filter up here, which is a bump pass filter where you can select either octave or terz bunt. And this is just the most beautiful thing to ping. And if you can't afford one of these, you might be able to grab this one, the Type 16. 30 filter which is passive and you only need to adapt via a DC power cable to whatever then you can use these and they sound great you can listen to them in my video on the Brilliant Care 2204 microphone Now that we've left filters behind, we come to one of the most exciting parts of test equipment instrumentation, lock-in amplifiers. A lock-in amplifier is a bandpass filter with an amplifier and a modulation frequency for tracking signals. They were designed to pick up the most minute of signals from the deepest noise. And when you ping them for music, they sound gorgeous. I have one here in my nuclear instrumentation rack, on which I made a video. And I've got a broken one that needs fixing. Because, sadly, some of these units were not built so well. They've got more fragile outsides, because they were not meant to be moved around a lot. They were laboratory equipment, after all. Companies that made lock and amplifiers are Princeton Applied Research, eg and g which comes from Princeton Applied Research, and then there are some by Itaco, which are aimed more at the ham radio crowd. So this is just a general overview. There's much more obscure stuff that can be very interesting and probably be found cheaply. I've got something like a medical stimulator up there that puts out up to 150 volts, but is also a lovely dual pulse generator, for example. Or there are telegraph message generators, which are like synthesizers with a sequencer inside. Or of course something like the saddest drone machine, which puts out a beautiful chord. And I suggest you explore what you can find around and just see if it will music. If you find a piece of gear and you are in question if it would music, go to the Heinbach subreddit and post a picture and everybody can take a look and make a guess and sometimes you get something that sounds great, cheaply, from a garbage pile. I hope this helps some of you to get into the beautiful mad world of test equipment and explore the sounds that lie there. If you like what I do, you can support me on Patreon or just buy my music. And if you have any questions, leave in the comments below or visit the subreddit. So that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.